Only the deaf and the dumb cannot see a world war coming. Now, that's a strong statement, and that's one we're going to discuss today with my guest, a returning guest, one of your favorites. We're talking about Gerald Salente. He has been writing the Trends Journal for over 40 years, accurately predicting trend after trend after trend, and he's been reporting on this for almost a decade, what would happen and how we're approaching what he calls a World War III. No way around it. We're going to talk about the Occupy Peace rally he just had, what the results were and how that shifted his thinking. We're going to talk about how he negotiates for peace in Ukraine, but at the same time predicts what the outcome will be, which is opposite of what he's calling for. Talk about war being a racket. Talk about the Chinese way and how it's being installed in through the West. Of course, talking about the ramped up efforts against Russia and World War III in his mind and what he thinks is coming next. It was a great interview with uh, Gerald, as it always is every time he comes back to the show. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Gerald Salente, thank you so much for joining me today. Always a pleasure to sit down and talk to you. Yeah, it's been too long. I loved being at your uh, great, great rally that you had that uh, uh, the bitcoin uh, event uh, last yeah. november yeah that was awesome and uh i also regret that i wasn't able to make it out to your event last week um, which i do want to dig into the occupy peace rally i've been doing a uh, fundraiser for an orphanage in mexico this was our 14th annual trip doing that and oh, good, uh yeah. You know, we just, uh, we're just a bunch of dirt bikers. We like to go ride dirt bikes in Mexico. And about five hours south of the border, there's an orphanage that, um, you know, in Mexico, there's no safety net like there is in the U.S. And uh, especially this orphanage really f deals with uh, kids with, with disabilities. So there's really no safety net for them. And uh, in the beginning, it was like, oh, let's just go ride. We'll give them a little bit of money. And then more people got behind it. And more people got behind it. And it grew each year. Uh, last year we raised like $240,000. Wow. Wow. And, uh, I was blown away and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's too much. Like, we're never going to be able to beat that. Like, what are we going to do? And this year going into a, uh, not technical recession, um, with air quotes, um, man, we raised almost half a million dollars. Bravo. So, Bravo. Yeah. I mean, it's been amazing. And so, Great. Uh, God bless you. Great, great. Yeah, so we're doing that. It, it gives them about half. They've been able to grow, add more buildings. They got buses. Now they're busing oh, in kids great. from other other cities. Right. Um, and uh, so anyway, I was doing that. So it was it was it was kind of important work. Um, but but let's talk about the Occupy Peace rally that you did last week, which I know was also uh, important as well. I would have liked to be there. So what was that all about? Well, it was all about um, honoring the founding fathers, uh, people like a real man named George Washington. And in his farewell address, he warns the American people not to get involved in foreign entanglements. But of course, that's a dirty word today. And you're not allowed to say that because um, all they do is the media whores that I call prostitutes. The media whores just sell wars. And the prostitutes hate peace. Go back to the, uh, to the Iraq war. Look up fairness and accuracy in reporting. Fair. They had hardly anybody on, like one or two, three percent of the people that are against the Iraq war. Right. All pro-war people. Look at, you know, how they, they sell one war after another. They lie about it. New York Times made the big lie that Saddam Hussein, they had these aluminum tubes. It was proof that he had weapons of mass destruction. And they blackball anybody that that um, talks about peace. You don't hear a peep about peace from these little prostitutes. And then you got a guy that's playing our um, defense secretary, Lloyd Austin. Oh, where did he come from? Oh, you mean he was sitting on the board of directors of Raytheon? The second largest defense contractor in America? Right. And he's our defense. Oh, and he was a general? You mean the military's taken over the country? You mean the military industrial complex that Eisenhower Dwight D. Eisenhower, <laughs> yeah. five star general, supreme commander of the Allied forces, warned the American people in his farewell address that they were robbing the nation of the genius of the scientists, the sweat of the laborers, and the future of the children? That Lloyd Austin? That Lloyd Austin? 
that shot off his mouth just recently. You ready for this? The U.S. is ready to move heaven and earth to help Ukraine win the war against Russia. Oh, move heaven and earth? You mean blow the crap out of every place? When Destroy did everywhere? That? When did they say that? Just recently. Oh, wow. This is how sick the people are. You know, World War II is not ancient history. No, it's not. And Germany was the most advanced country in the world at the time, culturally, scientifically, philosophically. And the reason I own those three historic buildings on the most historic four corners in America is when I came back from Berlin in 2012. I realized I couldn't, you know, there's nowhere else to go other than in America. I say to myself, this place was, Berlin was grander than Paris before it was bombed down. Why didn't the people stop it? You're losing the war right. before everything was destroyed. I see a beautiful old building and all new construction. Same thing. Everywhere you look. We're going in. When you have a guy shooting his mouth off and say he's going to move heaven and earth. Oh, so here's the deal. This is George Washington, who the media hates and instead looks up to Mad Dog Mattis, Miley with these eyes, these guys with all their military drag ribbons all over their body that have killed how many people since uh, the last 75 years? This is who they look up to. But screw you, George Washington, a real man that fought and crossed the Delaware. This is what he says in his farewell address. Any nation which indulges towards another in habitual hatred or an habitual fondness is in some degree a slave. He said, quote, observe good faith and justice towards all nations, cultivate peace and harmony with all. How Those dare he smart. say that? Those guys were smart back then. You talked well, about Eisenhower's warning about the industrial um, complex, but if you go back to the founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson gave us many warnings about the standing army and the danger that it posed. So yeah. we've known about this for a long time. Yep. And again, you read the George Washington's farewell address. He specifically talks about Europe. He said they have complexities that are going on that are putting put them against each other for you know on and on. This we don't get involved in this. Right. This is not our business. Oh, they're going to take down the statue of Catherine the Great in Ukraine because of their their the people's hatred of her for what she did to the Ukrainians. Wait a minute, was that seven hundred and fifty about seventeen fifty? You mean this shit's been going on between you two since seventeen hundreds? And you want me to get involved when I'm an American? Oh, oh, all you Americans out there that know every baseball player, their averages, who's in first, who's in second, who's in last, show me Ukraine on the map. Right. Yeah, nobody can. So I, I know you've, uh, you've been talking about this quite a bit. And a couple of things I've seen, and, and I don't know if they're contradicting, I'm sure they're, they're not in, in your mind, but where you're i've seen i've seen you say um that russia is not going to lose this like you don't you don't think nato will beat russia but at the same time you want to negotiate for peace in ukraine so how do those two ideas fit with each other peace with ukraine or russia not losing this is the trends journal from 2014 okay all about the united states overthrow of the democratically elected government of Viktor Yanukovych, the Ukrainian right. president who sided with Russia. Before that, they had the Orange Revolution when they threw out the other guy, the, another pro-American, then he came in. Here was the deal. Ukraine has been broke since the Soviet Union broke up. They needed money. They're gonna make a deal with the IMF and the EU. Putin said, I got a better deal than that one. I'll give you lower interest rates and I'll cut the price of oil. All the details, Victoria Newland, United States Undersecretary, December 2013. The real culprit. Yep, you know the story. $5 billion for NGOs to bring peace and democracy to Ukraine. 
So here was the deal with Russia. I lay, here I am in the United States. Up that way is Canada. Down that way is Mexico. Russians have missiles up in Canada. Chinese have missiles up in, uh, down in Mexico. And they have their fleets on both coasts. Oh, America would tolerate that easily. Sure, of course. So the deal was when the Soviet Union broke up that they said to Gorbachev, NATO will not move, quote, one inch further. There were 16 of them now. Now there's between 27 and 30, depending on, you know. All right, they doubled it. Number two, when the war happened, the Eastern Ukrainians didn't want to go with the, uh, with the, with the, with the coup people. So they had the separatist region. And the deal between, it was made between Germany and France that was signed by Ukraine and Russia was that that would be a separatist area. You could read Zelensky. You can't make this crap up. Could you imagine a guy that played a comedian on a sitcom and his role in the sitcom was to play the president of Ukraine actually becomes the president of Ukraine, Zelensky. He goes on to say, just this past week, talking about the war going on with Donbass since 2014. Oh, yeah. Oh, you mean you only killed 15,000 of them? So Russia said, we got to abide by the Minsk agreement. NATO does not expand one inch further. In January, United States fighter bombers were 14 miles off the coast of Russia and NATO doing maneuvers in the Black Sea or, uh, in the area off St. Petersburg. Number three is that the Donbass region, not a separate country, but it means a separate region. That was it. And not, not a lot to ask. Nope. So then we said, before it happened, you could look at the cover of the Trends Journal, February 22nd. And one, one thing to point out, I think, to a lot of people listening, is uh, wh why the Donbass region? Because oh. of the amount of Russians that were there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Russian. It's Russian. Right. Again, right. this and was I, Russia. That's, that, that's an important piece because there's, it's the amount of Russians that were there. And, and people have heard about these Nazis that are over there um, thinking like German Nazi, but they're just national socialists. And they, uh, they were pers the, the, the Ukrainian Nazis were persecuting the Russians that were there. Yeah. And everybody else that they hated. Right. You know, so that's the group, by the way, the Azovs. You know, it's, it's, it's the facts are there. And by the way, the European Union called... Ukraine, the most corrupt country in Europe and one of the most corrupt countries in the world. This is before this happens. Sure. So it's not my war. I'm an American. I believe in George Washington. So that's yeah, the thing. I'm against Russia's invasion. I want to going back. And now it trends journal February 22nd. Read the cover. COVID war, Ukraine war, world war. A. Moss, give me some weapons. I want to blow the brains out of this guy across the street. You give me the weapons, I kill him. Are you an accessory to the crime? Right. America's at war with Russia. Here, the other quote from that guy playing our defense secretary. One of U.S. goals in Ukraine is to see a weakened Russia. All right? Sending more and more weapons of death to bloody, bloody the killing fields. Right. We, I'm against the big, we said, look, once upon a time, there was a guy by the name of Napoleon. He leaves mm. Poland with 422,000 troops. There's a famous chart of his march to Moscow. Yeah. Comes back to Poland with 10,000. Once upon a time, not too long ago, there was a guy named Adolf Hitler that launched Operation Barbarossa against Russia. Only killed between 25 million and 30 million. And who are the ones to defeat the Germans and came in from East? Oh, Russia? Yeah. And you're going to tell me that a country of 40,000 is going to be one of the most advanced 
military and, and, and weapons holders in the world. Oh, America doesn't have hypersonic weapons. Oh, we even have shitty trains. We have high-speed trains. What are you talking about hypersonic weapons? Oh, Russia has hypersonic weapons. Yeah, history has not been kind to nations that have tried to march into Moscow. <laughs> uh, many have tried, and, and uh, they have all failed so far, right? So hasn't been good. So when you talk about negotiating for peace in Ukraine, but Russia not losing, so I think you've kind of framed that up. History shows that Russia, it's very difficult to march into Ukraine, or I'm sorry, into Moscow. Um, and you don't think that uh, that NATO can beat them. Yeah. Then how do, you, how do you negotiate for peace in Ukraine? They should just give up? They got to give up. They're going to have to give up. They should have done it before it happened. We said it at the beginning. Read the quotes from the people, the, the heads of Ukraine. Quote, we'll fight to the end. Oh, right. that's really smart, man. Yeah, fight until you die. Brilliant, brilliant. We're going to fight to the end. If a guy came in here with a gun, so get down on the floor, say, hey, man, take it easy. I'm down. What do you want? I'm not going to fight to the end. Right. So, no, right. You, you, they're going to they're gonna lose. And we saw we saw earlier a month ago, um, good old uh, Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff decided to go take a visit over there, which no reason why they should go over there. They're not secretary of state, uh, but they basically made similar claims. Right. They said we are committed to win this thing. Yeah. Like making bold claims like that. They're not even the right people to bank those claims, but much less like that pretty much doesn't leave you any wiggle room when you make a statement like that. Right. You're all in. Yep. And look at that little clown boy, Adam Schiff. You spelt it wrong. You got to put a T in there. <laughs> what a little clown of nothing. That little boy couldn't fight his way out of a paper bag. Right. All these little tough guys out there. You know, you want to go fight, go fight. You want to go send your money, go send your money. I don't want mine going to a war that has nothing to do with my country. Just like Afghanistan, Libya, Syria. Uh, oh, nobody talks about Yemen the worst humanitarian crisis on earth brought to you by the Nobel peace of crap prize winner, Barack Obama right. and little Anthony Blinken, our U S secretary of state, another little daddy's boy. I went to Dalton. I went to Harvard. I'm a member of the club. I've been over and taken up. You know what? Yeah. Oh yeah. The Blinken that went over to Saudi Arabia to give quote intelligence says the United States is refueling the Saudi airplanes to bomb the hell out of Yemen that they've been trying to get since they created the Saudi state in 1934. Oh, those great guys that America's selling weapons to all those. What, what, what bullshit uncle Sam is do as I say, not as I do. What's your favorite war? I like the Afghan war. It only lasted the longest war in American history, 20 years. I like the Iraq war. No, no, no. Give me the Libyan war. I'm going to tell you that guy Assad has to go. Oh, the Syrian war where 650,000 people have been killed. Look at these crazy people in charge. And they're calling out Russia. Yeah, oh, I'm Vietnam War era age. That was a beauty. Oh, just one more thing. They're doing the exact crap. They shoved down the people's throats during Vietnam that they're doing now. If we don't stop those commies, those dominoes are going to keep falling. And before you know it, all of Asia is going to be communist. Yeah. If we don't stop those Russians, now it's Ukraine. Then Latvia, Estonia. Lit yeah. Same crap. They're shoving down the people's mouths and the people are swallowing it. So I want to talk about that for a second. But just uh, for just for a point of reference, I mean, you have uh, you. you uh, uh, everyone's supporting the current thing, right? We have uh, we have uh, <laughs> Ukrainian flags being flown all over the place uh, in the neighborhoods on uh, social media, and I think uh, you know again to the point you made, and I would agree. Like I'm not for anybody invading anybody. I'm not for anybody causing war or death. So I'm I'm definitely not a, not not a fan of that. But at the same time, I think it's been sold to the American public that. Um, the U.S. has to stand up for the freedom of the Ukrainians <laughs> when the Ukrainians are not free. You already made the point where they already were one of the most corrupt nations in the world. They're a dictator. So basically, there's two dictators fighting against each other, and we're going to stand yeah. up for one dictator over the other versus what we just saw recently previous to the uh, pandemic 
we saw China taking over Hong Kong. So we yep. have a communist, a, a CCP, a communist, actual communist country taking over a free country. Um, and the, the people begging for help, flying American flags, singing the national anthem, and the U.S. said nothing, did nothing. Huh. Um, and then over here, we're going to stand up to Russia uh, to protect another dictator, not protecting people's freedom. So it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be almost one thing if we were standing up for people's freedom, but we're not doing that here. Uh, at least that's my opinion. Would you agree with that? Oh, come on. of course. Okay. You know, here. Again, I, I read you that quote from, um, what's his name? From George Washington. You know, you don't get involved in these, these countries' things. You hear, he said, he warned that any nation which, quote, indulges towards another in habitual hatred or an habitual fondness is in some degree a slave. So we become a slave. Right. I don't, it's not my country. Right. You think, oh, here it is. Let's say we get in a war, right? Oh, the Ukrainians would right, be right by our side. Oh, they'd be there fighting for us. Right. Yeah, sure. You know, uh, yeah. I, this I, I, is a I, book. Go ahead. You probably read this, right? Uh, Wars a racket. Uh, I have not. No. Wars a racket by General Smedley Butler, the most decorated Marine in history, the 1930s. War is a racket. It always has been. It is possibly the oldest, easily the most profitable, surely the most vicious. It's the only one international in scope. It is the only one in which the profits are reckoned in dollars and the losses in lives. In World War I, a mere handful garnered the profits of the conflict. At least 21,000 new millionaires and billionaires were made in the United States during the World War. That many admitted their huge blood gains in their income tax returns. How many other war millionaires falsified their tax returns? No one knows. And he hmm. goes on talking about all the wars he was involved in for the Brown brothers down in, in, in uh, South Latin America about bringing Standard Oil into China. It's yeah. all there. The most decorated Marine in history at the time. Let's, uh, let's see if we can uh, maybe reframe this war a little bit. So you've talked about the, the New World Order, as, as you like to call it, the New World Dis order. And um, as I as I kind of just made the case, um, you know, when when uh, China, a, a, a commu a, an actual communist country um, took over Hong Kong, a free country, um, nobody said anything. Nope. Um, so it wasn't it wasn't about standing up for the little guy and protecting people's freedoms. And this isn't either. And so I just want people to make sure they're aware of that. If you want to support Ukraine, do that. But just make sure you understand that we're not trying <laughs> to support people's freedoms there. Yeah. Um, do what you want to do. But but um, what I want to ask is, um, you know, to the kind of point you were making is like we have to stand up to the to the communists, otherwise they're going to take over the world. But this this might, in my opinion, almost be a war against freedom and communism, but not in the way people think it is. And so, what do I mean by that? Um, this looks like to me a a war of globalism, where yep. Russia is actually standing up to the globalist agenda. And the globalist agenda is one of communism, right? You'll own nothing, be happy. We're, we'll live in a commune. And, and I have a data point to, to draw back to. So when, when Trump went to Davos and said that the United States will, uh, will not lay down its sovereignty, the United States will work with other nations, but we will not lay down our sovereignty. Um, that became, he became the target of, of the whole world. They had to remove him because he wouldn't go along with the globalist agenda. Well, in October of 21, uh, Putin went to Davos and gave us somewhat of a similar speech where he said, um, he said, uh, hey, you think you guys are progressive with your wokeness, destroying the lines of families, uh, blurring the lines of what men and women are. Um, he said, this is nothing new. This is the same dogmas of Marx and Engels um, that led to the Bolshevik revolution. And like, we're not doing any of that. 
So he said, you woke nations, good luck, destroy yourself, we're out. And that was October 21st, I believe, or 16th of 2021. And then he became enemy number one. And so it looks like it's like, if whoever stands up to the globalist agenda won't go along with them, that's where the war goes. Am I seeing that right? Well, yeah, it's in this book called the uh, Uncommunist Manifesto. <laughs> well, we didn't well, go into I that part. Was. <laughs> no, it's to what you're so talking about. It's what right. Putin's talking about. The woke nation. It's right. not us hating the rich and the poor. You know, back in the, the, the other wars, they, when, when they wrote the, the Communist uh, Manifesto, now it's everybody against each other, individuals against individuals. Right. You know, I, you, I mean, it, it's, it's, so, it's, it's, it's beyond the belief. The people's minds wrapped up in this little crap. I don't care what you do, who you have sex with. I, you know, take it easy. Do yeah. whatever the hell you want to do. But don't tell me I got to believe what you want to believe. I don't. I can care less what anybody does, who they are, what they eat, who they have sex with, what they masturbate to. I don't care. So don't tell me I got to care and, and swallow your crap. Right. This is unprecedented what we're in. And what you're writing about is critical to our, what we were going down. You know, I talk about, again, you go to Berlin. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe how it was destroyed, how beautiful it must have been. Look at the people back then in the 1930s. Look at the style, the grace, the dress. Hey, how about in the 20s, the flappers, everybody, men dressed up, man, the black cats were the coolest, right? And now look where we are. We're down the crap of one bad rap, man. No soul, no swing, no R&B, nothing, nothing. One bad tech rap. Look at the people down the crapper. How far we've fallen as a society. Look at the data coming out. Hey, you know who's... I mean, we both, you know, we're both very much into what's going on in the economic scene. Hey, you see those Pepsi sales go up? Hey, McDonald's is still making money. Oh, you mean the people are still drinking and eating crap? Oh, yeah, yeah. blowing up blimpos? Oh, only 42% of Americans Salenti are obese. Only 70% are overweight. Oh, only 61% of all the 1 to 17-year-olds that were hospitalized, according to the CDC, for COVID we're obese. Look what's going on. Look what's going on. So um, is, is, how would you frame up the new world disorder then? You this know, globalist agenda, trying to get you fat and sick and distracted while you're taking all the power on the other side? You, and, 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 and shoot you up with every drug that they can imagine. When I was a kid, you know, I, I was born in the Bronx. I hated every day of school. I ran away from kindergarten at four and a half years old. And I crossed the Boston Post Road, which was the major artery before the highways. I'm going back to, you know, like 1950. Before, I could have got killed like that, right? They took me out of school. Today, they'd have me all shut up with drugs. At 18 years old, I had a Beretta. We weren't going through... We weren't going through metal detectors. Kids weren't blowing their brains out of everybody else. We weren't all whacked out on, you know, all these prescription drugs. Let's go back to what you said, and I'll put it into the perspective. You kept, you talked, you mentioned about Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. I used to be on Hong Kong TV in 2019. I was like on a lot. And I took a, you know, take a break. You know, I was on like 20 minute shows. And I say to guys, okay, what's going on? Mr. Salenti, we're not going to stop. We're not going to let the Chinese take over. 7.5 million people in Hong Kong. Over a million were taking to the streets. Over a million were taking to the streets. You can't get a million people in America out of 332 million to take to the streets of peace. Right. Anyway, then in 2020, January, Chinese Lunar New Year, the year of the rat, the COVID war begins in the city of Yuan. And what do they do? They lock it down. Shut the protest they lock down. down one after another, then they lock down Hong Kong. Oop, game over. Game over. 
Finito. So you ask me what we're becoming? The Chinese way. I'll tell you what to do. I'm little arrogant boy. Gruesome, newsome, Gavin Newsome. Yeah. An arrogant little boy, but I come from the background that makes me like that. Put on that mask. Close down your business. You're not essential. You're a piece of crap. Hey, I'll go to the French Laundry and, uh, and have dinner for $400 a plate. But you, you little slime balls, close down your businesses. Yeah. We become the Chinese way. Who would have ever believed we'd be locking down and wearing masks? Just like the Chinese. Well, did you see? Uh, I'm sure you did because you watch everything. But uh, the you know they have massive financial problems going on in China right now. The banks have run out of money. Massive yep. bank runs, and the people were going to protest at the banks. And uh, all of a sudden, their phones, their health passports, all turned red, and they couldn't buy bus tickets or plane tickets or train tickets to go to the pro protest. <laughs> they they just shut it down. Like that's the that's yep. the Chinese way. Um, are you familiar with uh, Peter Zion? I'm sure you are. I, uh, the, mm. no. Okay. No. Uh, he, he's written several books. He just wrote a book. I just had him on my show. The end of the world is just the beginning or something like that. Um, and, uh, he wrote a book, he's written several books. He wrote a book in 2014 and uh, talking about Ukraine as well and predicted that Russia would take over Ukraine. And he oh, kind of yeah. gives the reasoning why anyway. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, uh, he, he has a thesis that China by the end of the decade, won't even be around, won't even be a nation anymore. And part of the reason why he says that is because of demographics. They had this 40 years of one child policy. So he says, just, just population alone, they need 30 to 40 year olds. They, they can't get those for 30 to 40 years. So half their population will be gone in five, uh, by, I think uh, by 2050, half the population will be gone, just timed out, aged out. Um, and uh, they don't have a military. They don't have warships that can go past a thousand miles. They can't really patrol the oceans. Anyway, he has all these studies uh, and, and facts b backing it up. Um, we, it, it appears that China is going to take over the world. As you said, this Chinese way is coming for everybody. Um, uh, he, he seems to think that they're done for, um, but you're not familiar with his work. So I guess you can't really say on that one way or another. Well, well what you said, though, you know, some of it I agree with. And uh, but the other one, as I said, is we've become the Chinese way by the dictatorial policies. You know, I do it. I do a podcast every um, uh, Wednesday with Judge uh, Andrew Napolitano. Right. And there's no there's no greater judicial authority with the background that this guy has to talk about the Constitution, the, the Bill of Rights, et cetera. And, and we, we've lost everything. It's a it's a bad joke. And so on that level, we have. I would have believed that the 21st century would become the Chinese century until this COVID thing and then destroying the economy and right in front of everybody's eyes. You know, they, 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 you, well, there are four cases and they're closing down cities of, of four million people. Yeah. I mean, what, what are you doing over here? Cases aren't deaths either. And who's dying from this? They're destroying themselves right in front of the world. And by the way, we are going, and the reason for my, you know, the way I feel right now is that, you know, my business is to look ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm a trend forecaster. World War III's begun. Yeah, so let's, what, what is ahead? <laughs> Tell us about that. It's begun. They're not going to make, it's like they, they, they feed, they shove the crap down our throats. Again, the line from Napolitano, we don't have a public school system. It's a government school system. Right. Boys and girls, World War I began when they assassinated the Archduke Ferdinand in Sarajevo. Now, if you would make your test, make sure you got that right. What the hell is an archduke and where's the set? What's a Sarajevo? Right. You mean it wasn't building up before that? No, you, no, you put that right on the test. Right. Okay, yes, 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 yes. Oh, and World War II began when the Japanese dropped bombs on Pearl Harbor. What was anything leading up to it? No, that's what happened. They did it to us. I didn't, we didn't close down the oil or anything going on. Any other. No, that, that's it. The same thing they're going to do now. They're not going to say it became a war, World War III, until a nuclear exchange or a false flag attack. And the reason I'm so concerned and why I'm putting my heart, sweat, blood, and tears into Occupy Peace is because of a man by the name of... Um, What's that guy that, that, that worked on the atom bomb? Um, oh, boy. Who's the famous guy? Just drew a blank. 
and he said that um, they asked him, Einstein, Albert Einstein. Okay, yeah. What kind of weapons will be used to fight the Third World War? He said, I don't know. He said, but they'll be using sticks and stones to fight the four. Mm, wow. And that's what everybody better get in your head. If you don't do anything to support peace, we're going to die in war. We have maniacs in charge. Right. Little boys with arrogant attitudes, mentally ill, psychopaths, sociopaths, and pathological liars igniting the flames of war. We're at war with Russia. Yeah. And here, if we, again, just to show you the media thing, by the way, I do this every day. Like Here, a story in this week's um, Wall Street Journal. Big story. Russia strikes school, presses attacks. How come you aren't running these stories day after day? America attacks school, presses attacks in Iraq. In Afghanistan. So that's the propaganda side. Killed over a million people, according to some of the data in, in, in Iraq. How come you weren't showing Mad Dog Madison's annihilation of Fallujah? How about the United States' annihilation of Iraq in, in Syria? How come you weren't showing day after day after day for 20 damn years what America was doing in Afghanistan? I'll tell you why, Salenti. We're little media whores. We're little prostitutes. We get paid to put out by our corporate pimps and our government whore masters. I'm arrogant little Jakey Tapper. Tap on this. Oh, I'm I'm Don Lemon. Now there's a tough guy. Oh yeah, and how about Anderson Cooper? Oh my mommy was Gloria Vanderbilt. How the hell do you think I got this job? I'm on CNN, the Cartoon News Network. What a freak show. Yeah. Where are these prostitutes with all the laws of America? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, you had to be uh, one of the guys. What do they call that? When you, you had to, only when you were a journalist, you had to be with the servicemen. You couldn't go out on your own. Yeah. Yeah. Um, talking about World War uh, One, Two, and, and Potential Three, um, the other thing I would say is that uh, they didn't call it. I, well, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. I would imagine they didn't call it World War One during World War One. Uh, they didn't say we're officially in World War One. Right. Uh, that's when you look backwards on it. Uh, when uh, history shows when the Roman Empire fell, but the Roman Empire didn't think they had fallen for several hundred years. And so it's only kind of like we're looking backwards on it. Yep. And so to the point, no one's going to announce, oh, we're in World War III, but in history, uh, in the future, looking back on history, we'll see World War III. But I've been kind of thinking that World War III wasn't going to be so much the world against each other. It was going to be more about the people versus the governments. So if we take a look at that, um, we can see that, uh, you know, we saw the truckers, we've talked about the truckers uh, right. rising up, right? Uh, we've talked about, uh, well, we haven't talked about, we talked about that, but now we see like in Holland, uh, the farmers rising up, that's been spilling over now into um, Poland. Um, we see it in, uh, in Central South America, Ecuador, Peru. Uh, we see it in Lebanon. Um, and really it's the, the people rising up to the globalists. So they're taking away fertilizer, they're taking away food, energy, and the people can't take that anymore. So the Arab Spring, we're going to have Arab Spring 2.0 times a thousand, it looks like. Um, to me, that seemed like the World War III um, more than um, the nations, or maybe we have all of that happening at the same time. Well, I agree with you. Exactly. You know, let's go back to 2019. There were protests going on all over the world. There was 10 countries with over 1 million people each protesting in 2019. Right. So, you know, India, South Africa, Colombia, Peru, all over the world, Algeria. What were they protesting? Lack of basic living standards, right. government corruption, crime, violence. COVID war happens in 2020. Boop, locked them all down. Gone. Gone. So I agree with you. They're going to come back. They are coming back. They're Sri Lanka. They're going on Sudan. They're going on all over. When all else fails, they take you to war. What followed the Great Depression? World War II. Right. What followed the dot-com bust? The war on terror. Right. So 
the way that they have gotten the people to hate the Russians. Again, this has been going on. They had, when I was a kid, they had us hiding under a desk in case an atom bomb went off. That would have helped. <laughs> oh, yeah, it works perfectly. Yeah. Just like when you go on an airplane, wear the mask, but when you sit down and eat and drink, you don't have to wear it. But when you stop, put it back on because the virus knows, the virus knows. And when you go in a restaurant, you got to walk in with the mask on, but when you sit down, you take it off and eat, but then put it back on because the virus knows when you're eating and drinking. No, Won't so bother. standing up, yeah. Yeah. Science. So anyway, the same mentality. You know, I was a kid. I was scared shit every time I'd see an airplane. I used to think the Russians are going to bomb us. Um, so they're doing the same thing. When all else fails, they take you to war. These are maniacs. We are going through, we are going to have the worst economic crisis in human history. Look at the crap they did to fight the COVID war. Here, pump Pump out trillions and trillions of dollars. Give it to the people. Don't go to work. Here's money. Stay home. Here's money. We're just going to keep printing it. Oh, by the way, so the bigs could buy up everything. Bring the interest rates down to zero. Oh, no, we're in Europe. We're going to keep them at minus 5.50%. Oh, but inflation's going up. What inflation? It's only temporary, you stupid Salenti. I'm Jerome Powell, the Fed head. Oh, I'm Christine Lagarde. Oh, where'd you come from? Oh, the International Mafia Federal Monetary Fund, excuse me, before you got in the ECB. Oh, no, inflation's only transitory. Oh, and now in your um, new communist manifesto world, maybe we'll call it transgendatory right. inflation. So what I'm saying is they've created a financial crisis with all of this un unprecedented amount of trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and countless trillions of dollars artificially pumped into the system to pump it up when it was going down in 2019. Because the last quarter of 2019, Germany, the biggest economy in Europe, that far away from official recession, right. a fraction of a point. So it was going and down even, before. And it's even worse now. Yeah by a thousand times because now you have inflation in Europe at 8.6%, 9.1% in America. And according to the IMF, as they do with the countries that have to borrow money from them, they force them to raise their interest rates 1% over inflation, which means that our inflation, our interest rate should be 10.1%. Oh, oh, and the big news last week, ECB raised their rates, oh, right. 50 basis points, brought it to zero. Oh, you're buying corporate bonds? Are they going to be buying them again? Well, now. Oh, and what's new... the name of your book again? The Uncommunist Manifesto? Yeah. How about the Fascist Manifesto? What yeah. about that part of it? The merger of state and corporate governments, according to Mussolini. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and now they, the new ECB policy is this fragmentation policy where they want to now... Um, steal from the rich and give to the poor. So then now Germany will now uh, be taxed while they'll support the pigs, right? So Portugal, Italy, Greece, Spain, um, that's probably going to work out real well, I would yep. imagine, especially as Germany has no uh, energy <laughs> this this winter when oh, people yeah. get really cold and hungry, should work out real well. Well, that's the other point, going back to the worst financial crisis in the world. Gas prices were going up before the Russia invasion. And you listen to BS Biden shooting his mouth off, we're going to punish Putin. Telling the American people, no, these sanctions aren't going to hurt you. No, no, no. They're not going to hurt you. Oh, what are the natural gas prices? How much did they go up like a, about a week ago, 66% or something like that yeah. in, 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 in Europe? Now, and, and now they say, now they say it's your duty. You just suck it up and deal with it because it's for the war. So now we have to deal with prices we can't afford for this war that nobody cares about. Yep. Again, so when you're looking at the financial crisis here, it's unprecedented. This is unprecedented. I, the, the damage that has been done by the COVID war is incalculable. Yeah. The businesses that the lives and livelihoods that they've destroyed, the mental illness, they've destroyed billions, billions of people. They suck the joy out of life. Where I am up in Kingston, this place, you couldn't get a parking space. Couldn't get a parking space. The biggest complaint, park anywhere you want now, anytime. Nine o'clock at night, streets are dead. All over the area, Woodstock area, every place, dead at night. Businesses closed one after another. Oh, 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 you, you know where you're going to see a, a big, big 
huge baboon crash. How about the office, commercial office space? Oh, yeah, invest in that one. Oh, I think the office occupancy rate in New York City is about 35%. Oh, all those businesses that depended on commuters, screw you. We don't need them anymore. Go out of business. We are, go we are in the midst of a financial crisis, the likes of which we've never seen. People buying up all those homes with all those record low interest rates. And now as the rates go up, everything goes down. But don't worry, as I said, when all else fails, they take you to war. Yeah. So um, we got to, I got to wrap this up. Uh, it's been an amazing conversation as always, every time uh, it's never, never enough time with probably do it more regularly, but um, as someone who's been uh, calling the trends for over 40 years, um, what do you see happening? I mean, I guess you're saying that we're going into world war three. That's, that's, uh, per, that's, that's the base case, the most yeah, yeah. outcome. We're there already. Point. We're there. We're there. Again, look at our cover of the Trends Journal, February 22nd, two days before Russia invaded. COVID war, Ukraine war, world war. It's happened. Look at the, look, uh, Germany's just sending more tanks. Oh, Germany. Now, there's a nice place, man. They never yeah. did anything. They, oh, oh, they don't hate the Russians. No, they only killed about 25, 30 million of them. Why don't you mind your own business? Let them Let me settle this. Let, let me ask you uh, another question, because I know you're really active, uh, really trying to wake people up, as you already said. I mean, you, you had the obviously the Occupy Peace rally um, and, you, and you talked about if we can wake enough people up. And, and it's something that, that I've been saying and I uh, reference a quote from Samuel Adams all the time that it doesn't take a, a, it doesn't take a majority to prevail, rather a small, irate minority keen on setting brush fires in the minds of men. Um, and then someone pushed back on that a little bit the other day and they said, you know, um, yeah, it was, you know, less than 10% of the population, 5% of the population that won the American Revolution War. Um, it wasn't the majority. It was a small, irate minority. Um, but they were, they were the elites. So they were, they were the elites that wanted it. Um, and today, the problem is none of the elites, uh, not, not the politicians, but the billionaires, um, none of them are into this. None of them will speak up. Um, so we have, we have this, this, we have this middle, right. This silent, the silent majority, uh, the majority is getting noisier and noisier, but, but none of the elites are the, the influential billionaires. Do you see that? Is that a problem? Do you think a we overcome big that? problem? Yeah. Because right. they're making money. It's because wars are racket right. right here. He says it right here. The millionaires get richer. He goes right here. He said at least 21 thousand new millionaires and billionaires were made in the United States during the, during the World War. Again, since that slimy little lowlife piece of scum crap, Woodrow Wilson, brought us into that one, gave us the Federal Reserve, gave us federal taxes. So, I mean, it's right there. And, and so, you know, the other thing, too, we were talking before, it does take that irate, tireless minority. The billionaires haven't given us a penny for peace, not a penny for peace, not a penny for peace. Not a penny for peace. Oh, oh, uh, uh, what's his name? Bezos' ex-wife, two hundred and seventy-five million to Planned Parenthood. Great. Yeah. Oh, my body, my choice. Terrific. Oh, wait a minute. The Planned Parenthood that spent over two million dollars promoting the vaccination. The pl the Planned Parenthood that oh, it's not my body, my choice to get a vaccination. How about your hypocrisy? Yeah. I don't care what you do. You want to get a, it's none of my business. Do what the hell you want to do. But don't give me the crap that you're selling an Operation Warp Speed Gene Therapy jab first ever injected into the human body. And it's not my choice. And you're spending money. But you're getting all that money. No money for peace. Not a penny from Buffett. Not a penny from Bezos. Not a penny from Musk. Not a penny from anybody only we, the little people, are funding this. Yeah. Well, that is uh, unfortunately um, the outcome of uh, of where we're going. I'm gonna say uh, I believe I have hope for the future, and so uh, while it's scary and it's dark, and we're definitely uh, we're definitely in a bus, and the leaders with the steering wheel are driving us to the edge of a cliff. And at this point, they're not turning the wheel, uh, but I believe that uh, I believe that this falls apart and I believe we have hope on the other side. So um, it's uh, probably going to get worse before it gets better. That's my base case. 
Um, and I'm guessing that's your base case as well. Like you said, we're already heading into World War III, if not in it already. Um, but I think, uh, I, think, I think humans win. Human free, the drive for human freedom is strong. And so um, I'm going to go with that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> because we're, all, we're out here doing our parts. We're writing books. Oh, yeah. We, people have to stand up. You have to stand up. You know, you're an American. Be an American. And by the way, I tell people the best way to do it, get in the best shape you can physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Do everything you can to be in the best shape you can get into. Yeah. And pay attention. And one of the best ways you can pay attention is uh, staying on top of what's going on. The easy way to do that is uh, checking out Gerald Salente's Trends Journal. We're going to go ahead and link to that in the show notes down below. And with that, we'll go ahead and sign it off, Gerald. Thanks so much for joining me today. Ah, uh, thank you so much for having me. I, I greatly appreciate it. And I greatly appreciate all you do for so many people. Thank you. And I love what you've done for the charity. How, mwah, how beautiful and heartwarming. Ah, uh, thank you. All right, that's a wrap. Hopefully you enjoyed that conversation with Gerald Salente. He brings a lot of passion, a lot of energy to it. And so hopefully you carried a little bit, of, you felt a little bit of that. You can carry it with you. Um, we're going to go ahead and link to the Trends Journal down below if you'd like to check that out. He's been accurately predicting these trends for over four decades. He's a legend whenever he comes on the space, and I'd recommend checking out his newsletter. We'll link to it down below. As always... I'd love to hear your feedback on what he said. Go ahead and leave me a comment. Do you think we're going into World War III? Yes or no? Of course, as always, give me a thumbs up on this video if you like it and hit that subscribe button. While you're at it, I'm really trying to grow this channel and get it out to more people so we can wake people up, wake up the sleeping lions, as we say. That's what I got for you today, all right? To your success, I'm out. Since you've stayed to the end, I know you like this video, which means you're probably gonna really like this video right here and this video right here.